welcome everybody to the third of our Tana Focus live sessions here in AP Productivity Cohort 6. Good to have you all here today. We'll focus today on a couple of pieces, uh, building dashboards uh, for your task reviews, and also looking at projects and how to use recurring, build and use recurring projects uh, in specifically Tana. And so, and actually these, these will both now also be incorporated in a, in, in more, uh, small and easier to consume chunks uh, in my Tana for Tasks course that came out last Friday. Uh, so if if you're looking for a, a simpler, a uh, little less uh, verbose, long-winded version of this, uh, that will exist in that form as well. So let me share my screen over so you can see what I'm looking at here. We're going to start with the uh, idea here of of task dashboards. Uh, and, and so the first thing that you need to know uh, in order to build a, a dashboard for your tasks to review, the first thing you need to know is that setting up the tabs view requires you to set up here in Tana Labs, selecting tabs view. So what I did there is I went to the upper right hand corner, I clicked on the little gear indicating settings, and then under Tana Labs, I went and I chose I chose, <laughs> I chose tabs view. Um, so tabs view there is what allows you to be able to, to use the tabs view that we're going to use here in a moment. Uh, so let's, let's imagine, and, and those of you who are in cohort six know that I don't, uh, I don't teach a weekly review in the standard uh, GTD sense, uh, but rather we leverage the fact that we can have recurring tasks at any time to be able to do different reviews at different appropriate times and at different rhythms. So it's not all just one big uh, garbled weekly thing that we don't do, but it's stuff that's spread out uh, that we actually do do and is in a, in a more reasonable context. Uh, even with that in mind, though, it's very useful to have a place, a dashboard that we can go to to perform those reviews. It makes things a lot quicker. It means we can accomplish more in less time. And so I want to talk through just uh, just quickly at how easy it is to create such a thing here in Tana. Okay, so we've turned on the tabs view. I'm not even going to go into tabs uh, in the tabs view yet. I'm just going to show you how to set this up. Let's set up a little thing here. We'll call this a, uh, a task das dashboard or task review dashboard. Let's look, uh, grab ourselves a little chart emoji here as our starting point task review dashboard is what we'll call it. And now since everything in Tana is a node, uh, we'll want to make sure that we move into this node and indent underneath it for everything we're going to do for a task review dashboard. So I'll hit enter and tab in underneath it. And then if you're on Mac, you can use command shift greater than um, it, on, on Windows, you can actually use alt right arrow to just focus in on that particular node. So that's what we're going to do just for the sake of, of the visual here. Now I'm going to create, um, let's start with maybe three queries that we might want to use in order to engage with our tasks. I'm going to, when we're done, I'll go through and prep some tasks that will fit into these queries so you can see how that works on that side as well. Uh, but, but just so you can, we can have it built and ready. First things, a couple of these live sessions ago, I talked about horizons, horizons being my solution for capturing how close, quote unquote, to me a task is, whether it's scheduled, whether it's something I want to do this week, whether it's simply available for me to do, whether it's something I need, I have deferred to a specific date later or something I've delayed. So the first uh, query I'm going to put here is what I call my available tasks query. I look at that every week. Uh, and I also look at available tasks in a different way, and we'll talk about it in a moment. But I look at that every week as a way of assessing uh, how how um, uh, how many of these do I want to move into something that I do this week? How many of these do I want to schedule? How many of these that need to be demoted to delayed? Uh, but I, that's something I do weekly, so I want to have a place that I can do that. What I'm going to do here is build a search node. And it comes up, of course, unnamed search node. We'll call this available tasks. And since we're looking for our tasks, and granted, if you're watching this video uh, alone, there's a lot of uh, stuff talking about building the to-dos a while back in, in a couple videos ago. So just I'll, I'll show that here as well, but just know that this isn't just immediately from scratch. There's some groundwork this is built on. 
if I go to to do, obviously I want something that is a to do when I view my available tasks. And I also want something that is not done. So I hashtag to do and I say not done. Uh, and then specifically, I'm looking for her, the horizon available. So in order to do that, I need to also search for a field. And I use the greater than sign for that. And the field is horizons. And I'm specifically looking for those horizons that are available. And so just to kind of walk through what I just did there again, I use the greater than sign to call up the horizons. You can see by the third letter there, I can, it's already chosen as the, as the top option. And then here, because this is a fixed options menu, I can just start typing available and by two letters in, nothing else has AV as a combination in it. So available's there and I can just hit enter. Now, any task that I have in my, in this uh, tonograph, uh, that is a to-do, is not done, and has a horizon set as available, will show up. Uh, at the moment, it looks like I have some that were left over from, uh, from what we did before there. A couple of these uh, clearly things that uh, were uh, recurring tasks that turned into available tasks, that's fine. But you can see that the, uh, it works here. If I open these up, you'll see the horizons for all of them are available. So that we have grabbed all of the available to do's that we have. Okay, so another uh, query, and we'll I'll, I'll look at that in more depth when I, I show you how to use it here in a second. Another query I like to use is what I call available tasks by context. So this is where we're going. I'm going to show you a little bit about grouping things that show up in queries. Available tasks by context context is something I might use. Say I finished the work uh, that I wanted to do uh, in the morning in my office. Uh, and I have uh, maybe 15 or 20 minutes left over. And I say, hey, you know what would be nice? It'd be nice if I could knock out a couple of tasks that I need to do in my office quickly and easily. This is analogous to the next actions in, in GTD, but it, it has a slightly different approach tied into the horizon. So if I build myself a query here, again, we'll call this one available tasks by context. And in this one, we're going to look for the same basic things. We're going to hashtag to do. We'll say not done. We still need available tasks. And actually, we're going to leave it right there because that query is now exactly the one before. I, when I'm talking about text, I don't want that part of the search. I want to make that part of the view, OK? So when I come here, what I actually want is to go to where it says group. And when I say group, I can group by, have I not put a context field in them? I thought I did. Oh, I just don't have anything listed in the context field yet. Let's put one that has a context in it. We'll say that put out the trash has to be done at home. Cool. So now that I have one that has a context in it, I can group by context. Notice I went through that kind of quick because I was solving a problem in my uh, in my uh, little presentation here, but that's actually worth noting. Something won't show up in your grouping options or your sorting or displaying options unless one of your one of your to do's in this case or whatever the tag may be actually has a value set for that item. So I set the I put put out trash. I set that as a, as a context of home, even though that's really a recurring action. So that con context would show up here. That will let me now choose grouping by context. And of course, we know that nothing's defined yet, but now we can put all of our contexts in here and see the tasks that are relevant to specific contexts. We'll come back in a moment when I'm talking about using them. And I'll save that for everyone, uh, since we do have some shared users on this graph. And, and let's do one more here. Let's say I want to look at my um, deferred tasks. I didn't capitalize the one up here. See now my uh, need for that it's overruled my need to pr present here. Deferred tasks, um, upcoming, we'll say upcoming deferred tasks is what I'll call it. And this one requires because we don't yet have um, relative dates that we can use that can be ongoing in Tana, meaning like if I say from last week to four weeks from now, that we can't do that and then it it like updates automatically over time. This is a kind of query that we'll need to have a little extra information about. And actually, since I started naming it before I uh, actually created the query, let me 
quickly cut that text uh, and create the query. And then we'll paste that text here. Uh, so now we have that um, as we do that. I will also add, and I'm going to use, I'm on Windows, I'm going to use Alt-I. It's actually Control-I, not Command, but Control-I on, on Mac. We can add a description. And I, I add a little description here, so I remind myself what I need to do to keep this query functioning when I arrive here. And so I'm going to say I need to update the uh, dates uh, for the query. Um, and I'll, I'll make that, that, that'll be good enough, okay? So what we're gonna do here is I am going to set it for to do. I am going to set it for not done. There certainly may be cases where you want to see done to do's, just none of these for me at least. And then I'm gonna set the horizons on this one for deferred. But now we also need to have a couple of dates in this query, because when I look for deferred, Deferred to me means that I have put it off until such date that I want to see it again. And so every week I double check deferred to see if there's anything coming up, you know, on the horizon, so to speak, uh, that I need to now be aware of, that I need to start putting back on my radar, maybe turn it into available, maybe turn it into this week or schedule it for a specific date. So deferred, in other words, has a date attached with it. Uh, and and if it doesn't, uh, I, I need to have a separate query that catches those things where I may have messed up and deferred as being sent without a date. Uh, but the idea here is I now need to catch anything that's happening over the next, we'll say, four weeks that is tagged deferred. I always give myself an extra week back as well. This is going to let us use examine a little system field um, within uh, within Tana that is interesting to use. We're going to use the less than and the greater than fields. So it's a field. When I type GT, you'll see that I get a field definition there of greater than is the first option. And now that means that what I'm going to be searching for here are due dates that are greater than a certain date. And also then I'll have a separate one for due dates that are less than a certain date. In other words, I'm catching myself a range here. Okay, so this, I, I need to then put the whole field for due date here. Uh, and I'm going to leave the, the definition of the date empty because, again, I'm going to have to define that each time I come and do it. That's why I wrote update the dates for the query at the top. And then for this one, we'll say less than. And we'll add due date to that mix as well. So we need it to be greater than a certain date and we need it to be less than a certain date and we have it set to deferred. So I'm gonna click that as done. That's uh, <laughs> uh, bringing up a one task that is has was showing where I was building something else out there. We won't worry about that for the moment. I'll, I'll fix this stuff when we use them here live. Now we get to the part that actually talks about building this as a dashboard. If I go up here to where it says task review dashboard, right now there's nothing up here letting me choose anything other than, well, anything really. Uh, but if I hit Control or Command K, if I'm on Windows Control K, if I'm on, if I'm on Mac Command K, I can choose View, and you can see here it says Show View Options. I typed VI and I got all everything that had a view around here. Show View Options. I'm going to choose that, and now I have some options here. And View as Tabs is included. If you don't see Tabs, remember at the beginning I set. And the, in the settings in Tana Labs, I set the tabs view as an option. So you need to do that first. Once we set this for tabs, now all of our queries are set up in dashboard format so that we can just click through and see the things uh, that are listed in them here. So we can, we can get an interesting uh, layout uh, where we can move through each of these things. I just saved that for everyone as we did that. So now let's let's populate these queries uh, with some stuff. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, I'll show you this because this is something that uh, I don't need any of these uh, these in here anymore as a, for demo purposes. So you'll notice if you try to delete something from a query, if I hit backspace while I'm here or delete or whatever, it's going to tell me one or more nodes were references in search node and could not be deleted. The reason for that is these are not, I'm searching for things. So there's no real logic to being able to delete them from a place where you're searching. What you can do, however, is hard delete. Now, 
please use this with, uh, with caution because this will delete a node and all references to it. But if you use that command K or command K on, on Mac or control K on Windows, you can choose hard delete including references. And that will knock out these references and the original node on which these references are based uh, and any other references to it anywhere else in your tonograph. In this case, because we're just in demo mode here and I'm in my demo graph, I'm just going to hard delete these out. And even if it's this, just to be careful, throws me this. Let's say, are you sure you want to do that? In this case, yes, I do. Um, and uh, deleted all the original nodes and references, but left them in the left them in the query. Why did it do that? Well, now I'm confused. I don't know why that's still there. I'm not going to worry about it for the moment because I'll just populate it with some stuff that. Uh, let me just undo them as as uh, as. Um, We'll just uh, change them so the horizons are no longer set as available. We'll just set them as needs review and then they'll go away. So that'll that'll solve our problem of needing to have them that way. So let's populate now um, these queries with uh, some some new content so we can show a little bit about what's uh, sent away here. I also, by the way, review my needs review once a week just to make sure. So let me now go over to our daily page here. Oh, nope, that's my personal daily page. Let me go to the one that's in the... Uh, in this graph here, where we created the dashboard. Oh, oh, one other thing before I before I do that, I want to I want to take this dashboard node and I want to put it on home, the home uh, page in case you would want to do that. So if I if I want to say I want this dashboard to be something that's actually on uh, in in the top level of my tonograph, I can go to the top level of the graph here. And I can reference it over here. You can actually, there's some dragging things you can do too, but I'll show you sort of what I think is the um, simplest way here. I can reference that task review dashboard that we just created. And now I have a reference to it on the top level, which is enough if that's all you wanted to have. Uh, but you can also then use, if you click in it, Command or Control K and choose Bring Reference Node Here. Now this is the original and the one that I created back on the Today page is now, as you can see, because it has a little dotted line around it, is now the reference. So I, I display that mainly so you can learn about bring reference node here in case you hadn't encountered that yet. Um, but that's something that you can do pretty easily. And now that lives on the top level of the system. And if you wanted to bring in the sidebar, you know, uh, you'd be able to bring that in and you'd be able to see that right there. I, 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 I'll just go ahead and bring in the sidebar here. I have a lot more stuff in here. But uh, here at the AP Productivity Demo, you can now see that lives in the actual sidebar. If you wanted to, if you wanted to open it from there, you could. Okay. So now let's go back to uh, the today page that we were on, so we can populate a few tasks here. Uh, and let's just let's just make up a few tasks in a hurry here. Task one, task two, task three, task four, task five, task six. We're not going to worry about it being perfect or anything like that. Task eight. Okay, so we're going to go ahead um, and set these all as to do's. You may recall that you can highlight a whole list and set them all at once. And this is true of any kind of tag that you're using, um, but to do's are a particularly uh, you know, useful one for that. So I set it as a to do, and now they're all set that way. If I go in here, you'll notice that all of them are already set automatically to available. That is because in the to do configuration, I'm clicking on, I clicked on to do, and I'm clicking on configure. I actually have available set as the automatic, as the default setting of horizons. That's my, that's my preference. Uh, you could, of course, set whatever horizons you want or not even use horizons. I mean, it's up to you. But uh, if you're using the, if you're using horizons, I like to set it as available because that means at the very least, I'm going to see it. Um, when the week comes. <laughs> and so I'll be able to make a decision then, you know, if I want to move it forward. Now, let's imagine probably uh, that I don't necessarily want all of those to be available. Um, maybe I want to say, oh, you know what, this one, I actually want to defer this until um, we'll say November uh, 15th. Okay, so we'll defer, we'll choose a date here, we'll say November 15th. So I don't want to see that until November 15th. And then we'll do that also with task two. Let's say let's defer this until uh, November 25th. And then for to keep things interesting, task three, we're going to defer that 
until, now let's go ahead and put this out on December 15th, okay? So I have now three deferred tasks, all with their date attached. Uh, let's misassign one here. I'm going to set deferred, but not set a date. So for my system, that's misassigned. That's not going to that's not going to arise at any point um, because I have that uh, that should not be allowed. I need to have a date attached if it's deferred. Delayed is my thing. I just review on a regular basis. Okay, and then that gets us to the rest of these are available. What we'll find now in our task view. Let me go ahead and set a few contexts here as well. Um, I have context hidden by default uh, because I don't necessarily attach a context to everything. Let's imagine, though, that I have this one, task four, I need to do in my office. Uh, task five, I need to do at church. Uh, of course, we can set these with the command or control K as well. If I hit control K here, I can set context to be, I need to do it when I'm with my boss. Uh, and in this one, I can set my context to be, I'll do another one in the office, and I'll use com control K or command K again for this one, set context, and we'll say this is another one that I need to do at church. So now we've just populated a few tasks for the purpose of being able to view what's going on our dashboard here. Uh, it's, on the, it's on the main page here, but we also still have this reference here. So I'll go ahead and click into the reference. And you can see right off the bat here, our four available tasks that we just assigned, five, six, seven, and eight, a good good set of tasks for choreographers. Any choreographers in the room? I don't know. Five, six, seven, eight. Um, I've been in a lot of dance rehearsals as a pianist, I'm not as the dancer. Uh, so you can see all of the uh, all of the uh, available tasks are listed here as they should be. If I review this once a week, and I'm not going to dive into the details uh, of this, but if you wanted to use it. Um, uh, you could set up recurring tasks to remind you to look at your available recurring tasks. I talk about in last week's live session that I did, um, but you set up a recurring task that says review available tasks. <laughs> uh, and then that's, that's a recurring task that shows up every whatever day you want it to show up. I have it show up on Saturdays. Um, and then I can come in here, I can review them. And what's really cool is I can set this view to table, for instance, um, and save that for everyone. And then I have access to all of the layers of it and I can go through these tasks one at a time and say, oh, I wanna do this one this week now. It's gonna show as a mismatch because it's reset to this week, but it still wants to stay here in the available task in case you wanna set anything else for it, which is kind of a cool little feature. It lets you know it doesn't belong here anymore, but you can still mess with it if you need to before it goes away. I'll set that back for now. I could say maybe this one I don't I don't want to do. I'll delay that. I would also have a recurring task set up to remind me once a month or once every couple of months to review my delayed task list because remember those also don't have dates with them. So uh, at least in my system, you can have build it however you want in yours. Uh, but that's the the reason for that there. Um, and so I can I can set them up and I can do that. Remember, I had my second query here that says available tasks by context. Now that we've defined those, you can see oh. I have these set up now, five, six, seven, eight are set up so that they will show up correctly um, in, in the appropriate settings here. Okay, so those are done that way. I'm going to go back to that uh, day page just for a second here. And I set four to be, oh no, I set it to be deferred and then office. So I, I got confused about what I was doing. There's no point to set that to office and also deferred. Um, I mean, I could, there's no reason available would, would bring it back up in that query. I knew there was something I'd done weirdly there. So let's go back to our task review dashboard here, and you can see that. Now we can also, I'm going to demo this upcoming deferred tasks. You'll notice everything shows up in here right now because they're listed as deferred, but I have not yet clarified what dates I want. Remember, I set up a greater than and a less than. So for myself, what I like to do, and I'm going to use press space to insert date, and then, sorry, I'm going to have to, let me make this slightly larger. That should push them to the bottom. There we go. Yeah. I'll bring that back. So I can then choose the date. Uh, since today is the 7th of November, I'll go back one week. It needs to be greater than a week ago. Um, and then it also needs to be less than, as I say, I like to go four weeks out. So it needs to be less than December 5th. So now when I run that query, the only ones that show up are the ones that actually fit that. So let me reduce the screen size one level back so those go back to the side. So the only ones that show up are the ones that are actually between those two dates. 
This is November 15th. This is November 21st. And you may remember we set up one to be December 15th. It is outside this range. If we were to review, you know, rebuild this and make this um, instead of Monday, December 5th, if we came in here and said, oh, you know what, let's put that out. Um, I'm using W to do this, by the way. W, I'm putting out two more weeks. Um, w moves it up a week and did that. Now, all three of these would show up because this one was set up to be the 15th and now the range from October 31st to December 19th includes December 15th. So it's a relatively straightforward thing to do. You know, that's why I include myself the uh, little note to update the dates for the query. Um, the other query, and I'm not going to do it now because I want to make sure I get to time to get to the projects and I want to make sure you have time for questions. The other thing I would do is add a query and I actually do this as one query. I have a query that says like uh, I, I named it like incorrectly assigned tasks. So one of the things it looks for is if something is set as deferred, but it does not have a date set, it'll show up in the incorrectly assigned tasks query so that I can fix something. And so that's something I look at every so often just to make sure if I've done something, user error has been committed. <laughs> I can fix that by doing that. I'm not again, I'm not going to run that right now just in the interest of time, but essentially you can put any kind of query you want here in the dashboard to serve as a backstop for mistakes you may have made or to catch, uh, you know, whatever kinds of different layers of tasks. I have one here for my delayed tasks. I review that every month or two and I have a recurring task set up that reminds me to do that. Uh, the that's that's how I make sure that that doesn't get lost in the shuffle. So that's that's what a dashboard looks like here um, in the in the process of, you know, how you would set that up in Tana. I'm going to leave that for the moment. If you have any questions about it, file them away. So I get I'm going to want to, I'll, I'll take all kinds of questions here at the end. I want to move over and talk just a little bit about uh, the projects and what I call recipes, which are recurring projects and how I'm currently setting those up uh, in, in Tana. And when I say how I'm currently setting them up, um, I, I think that this is the way I'm going to stick, keep setting them up, but I just wanted to, you know, qualify that slightly. So just to clear up some space here, um, I don't need these anymore for the review, so I'm going to actually delete them. I'll keep the task review dashboard up there. And you notice when you delete the original, it just tells you if you deleted a node that you referenced somewhere else. It isn't like trying to delete a search thing where it gets confused. And honestly, I'm still confused why I didn't hard delete those others, but uh, we'll, we'll not worry about that for the moment. So I'm going to close this screen up here so I can pull the other one up. And now I have, and I know uh, Tracy, you were, uh, you had the, where you were talking about uh, conceptualizing the sidebar versus the panes and all of the various things. The panes are trying to get, to get them organized here. So that was me, me uh, having them aligned on the right side there um, as you do that. So a couple of quick things. I, I want to just look quickly at my project definition here. So we'll say sample project, and then we'll tag it as a project. Uh, so that I, I say that projects are hubs. And what I mean by that is when you have a project in your system, it should give you a, a essentially a dashboard, although maybe not phrase, maybe, maybe shaped, shaped like a dashboard, but just a place where you can go, the hub for the information that is related to that project. And so Tana makes that possible in a way that nothing else quite has. I've had this feeling since when I used Rome before, even I just used linked references as ways of bringing things in. Tana makes it, the queries make it all the more interesting and powerful. But if I were to open up the project, I clicked project directly on project, and I'm now clicking configure. If I open up this project configuration, what I have in here, and this is an example, some of this I'll walk through and some of that I won't worry about. Um, but I have my tasks up here. My tasks query is actually set up in here. I don't know why it's saved for everyone. I may have changed it slightly beforehand. The tasks query is actually said, I can't see it because there's too many things on the screen. Let me uh, up screen size one more time to it does that. So there's the project. You can see what it's actually looking for is grandparent. And the reason it's looking for grandparent, normally if I had it on the top level of the project, it looked for parent, but because I'm inside a field here, I need to go one more level up to get to the name of the project. So in the definition of the project, it's saying whatever the grandparent node of this is, is the list I want this to belong to. List I defined a couple of live videos ago. So it's essentially looking for anything that is an instance of bin. And if you recall from the that video, I also made projects to inherit from bin. 
So a project is a type of bin in this term. So everything that is anything that will show up on a to-do, and I'll demo this in a second, uh, but anything that would show up as a list in a to-do will be a bin or a project. And so let me let me now show what it looks like in sample project here. You'll notice that tasks have nothing to show at the moment, but if I were to add down here a to-do, and I were to assign that, to the list sample project that should show up here now why is it not showing up here now hang on maybe because i had it open oops now i've done this give me one second <laughs> the, the the curse of, of upping my screen size so that everybody can see it yeah there it is i it, it worked fine i just had tasks open if i had closed it and reopened it it would have been there so having created that now um that sample to do down here and add it to sample project, it shows up in there. What's very cool about having this task list like this is you can also add them directly here. It will show up as a reference. It puts it back on the main daily page. Um, but it comes, it comes ready made with all of the correct definitions. If you add it directly to the list, it'll put the correct project and, 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 and whatever in there. They're both ones that were created, so they default it to available, like I showed you a few minutes ago. Um, but you could then take them and set them up however you want. And, and this is a critical, at least in my approach to Tana, this is a critical point. And that is surfacing these via the dashboards and via scheduled and, and whatever this week uh, is, is a property of the to-do, not necessarily the property of a project, meaning that it's the to-do that gets to decide what, what project it belongs to rather than going to a project page and saying, now I'm gonna list all the tasks associated with this project, which you can do, as you see with this query, you can enter them directly that way. But to do that, to make that happen, sample three, we'll say, to make that happen, it does the fancy footwork of automatically attaching it to this list so that it lives inside this query. Uh, so it, it does it, that's automatic. If you're entering something directly into a query, it will set up whatever parameters need to be set up in order for it to work within that query. But the the idea here being, if I define, if I'm just in the, and I do this all the time, <laughs> by the by, if I'm in the middle of something and I need to set up a, a task that belongs to a certain project, I just hit my uh, control or command, depending if you're on Windows or Mac, E, and I can quick add a to-do right here. Now I won't do it, I won't demo it because it'll actually go to my main graph rather than to the uh, AP productivity demo graph. But if I were to type a to-do in here, I can then set that up with the appropriate project and everything. And I could do a whole list of them and use control K, command K and choose the uh, set list from that and, choose, and set a whole list of them to the same project if I wanted. And I don't even have to go to the project page to do that. Because the project is a hub, it is gathering to it all of the things that need to be need to be gathered around. The queries in Tana make that extraordinarily powerful. So uh, I, I, I won't belabor this point any further. I haven't dealt with this project history down here in detail yet, so I'm not going to demo it in the moment. But the same concept is it will happen there. I'm actually going to put this in as a field in the same that I did with the task. The same concept can be there. You can have a project history query, and the history query can literally say, rather than looking for a specific tag, it can look for the, look for the system concept of has tag. So something that anything that has a tag and also belongs to the list sample project can go into that project history. And you might want to exclude to do um, because to do will you know show up in, in the other in the task place. Um, or you might want to exclude to do's that aren't done, but but include to do's that are done. Maybe you want to see those in the history. So uh, it's you can build a query then that can pull anything in here as long as the list is set to sample project or in or what you know as long as it, it, it in some way is connected to sample project a search can bring it in here i also you know as you saw include lists place for clients and collaborators these are people person instance fields so any person i have defined i don't have any people defined in here but i started typing um, a person uh, it'll say joe smith it'll give me the option to tag that as a person and now i have a person in my system uh, but these are clients and collaborators are just instance fields that's not the main point that I wanted to talk about at the moment, um, so I didn't get too far into that. 
but note that a project gathers everything to it. I can list my collaborators, I can list my clients, I can list the start date, I can then have queries that bring all the to-dos in that are associated with this project and still list them directly in that query in the project. I can have a project history that gathers everything into this project. You can build that to whatever parameters you need it to be. The big question that I want to talk about with the last few minutes here, and thankfully, a few minutes is enough. This is this is a, a big heady concept, but pretty simple to execute, is the idea that what if I finish sample project and I say, hey, you know what? That's a project that I'm going to do 15 times. And so I need to save the information that I have here in sample project in a template form that can then be what I call a recipe. So a recipe is a is a uh, project template from which you can build the project. The only challenge with building a recipe is I can't have the tasks living in the system as to-dos because as I've noted before, to-dos live, um, you know, the to-dos are the basis of my system. I don't want to-dos that are associated with templates showing up in queries or things like that. I could probably solve that at the to-do level, but it's actually even easier than that. And it allows us to create a talk about how we would spawn a new instance of a project template, a recipe that I'm going to show you here right now. I've gotten to the end of sample project, we're saying then. So I'm using sample project. Um, I've got sample project done. And now I want to set it up as a recipe. So recipes are effectively super tags that extend project. So I'm going to create a a a specific super tag for sample project and before we leave i'm going to show you a couple that i have already running in my actual main graph as a demo for how this how this can work live and in in real life um and and they are working for me we'll just call it sample project for the sake of it and i'll show you a couple that are real here in a moment i want to make sure this extends project so if i click on it and click configure and then go down to advanced. I can say extend an existing tag. And from that list, I will choose project. And so now sample project gets all of the stuff here um, that I need for the that I need for uh, keeping the project information. There's one more thing I need to add here. And it's a field that I call template tasks. So in this, I'm going to actually just type the field. You could get, bring this here with a tag too if you wanted, but I'm going to do it this way because temp, these can be shared. So we'll call it template tasks. And what we're going to do before we leave this sample project is we're going to take these tasks, because you'll see here there's no tasks here. There's no tasks here because this is the super tag definition, not the separate instance. We don't want any tasks here in the actual definition of the recipe of the project we but but we do want to keep track of hey these are three tasks that i need to do in order for this uh, for this recipe to be valuable this is where i'm going to put them so we'll say this is a sa simple sorry sample sample to do this is sample two and sample three so now i have included with this uh, recipe that is called sample project. I have included the three tasks that I need to be able to run this project. Presumably it would be more tasks, but we'll say that that's all we need for this, okay? We're not saving them as to-dos. We'll get that when we when we bring this pro a new instance of this project into existence is when we will assign the to-dos. I'm gonna do one more thing, and this is just for aesthetics. For the template tasks field, which once you've defined it here, you can then define it and it, it'll it'll show up anywhere that you go to use it. Um, once you start typing template, it'll know where to go. Um, and in the advanced here, I'm going to set it. See, it says hide field conditions. I'm going to choose it to hide always because later on, I don't want to, I, we're going to actually leave these to do's in here and I don't want a, a separate looking, I don't want to see a separate instance of the to do's when I do it, when I'm running this project. Let me show you what I mean by that. So this is the original sample project up here. Uh, now that we've saved it, uh, we don't even need to have it saved as, a, as an instance of sample project here uh, because it's, it's, you know, it's the one from which it was built. So we can remove that instance from here. And now let's build a new one. 
So this is a separate instance of a sample project. If I tag that then sample project, I am going to get all of the things that came along with sample with with the sample project, including you see hidden here template tasks. I said always when I open that up, the three tasks that I have saved are there. In order to turn them into a real thing, what I have to do is set them. Let's see if I did this. If I did the setting of list correctly, let me just double check one thing because this is this will this will uh, this needs to be seen here. Um, let me go into the to, to do configuration list should be set if I'm clicking on the list configuration here. I didn't. So I'm going to set this to auto initialize to ancestor with this tag. By doing this, I'm going to make it so that when I create the to do's inside that template tasks thing, it's going to auto know that they belong to this project. It's going to set the list correctly. Okay. So now I've got it's hidden again. Uh, we'll bring it back. These are my three to do's. I'm going to turn them all into do's. Oh, that's right. There's a little buggy thing that that when I try to do all three of them in the, inside the field it doesn't work. When I do two, it does. I don't know why that's happening, but but I remember catching that when I was working on my others in 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 real life. And you'll see these are already set to this is a separate instance of sample project because I had that set to do set automatically to its ancestor that was a bin, and which means they also are already showing up up here. And that then also means that they can continue to live here because I hid template tasks. I now never need to go back in and see those. That's where they're living, but it doesn't matter because I can see them out here and any further tasks that I add here will, will be added to uh, the project at, as it normally would be. Let me show you a couple of these in real life so that you can see how it's actually functioning without the word sample all over the place, which I know can be some kind of disorienting for how that works. And also, Two things. I know you'll have to watch this slowly again. And Conifer Tasks will break these down into little chunks. Um, and when we talk about dashboards and when we talk about uh, creating these things uh, in modules four and five of that, which will be coming for this week, five early next week, I believe, um, it will break it down into smaller chunks uh, that, that you, can, you can work from as well. But let me show you live what we have going on here. I actually kind of prepped these already. So I have my weekend upgrade and my AP productivity cohort saved. Weekend upgrade is my newsletter, AP productivity cohort. I think you all know about since you are in it, um, unless you're watching this on YouTube later, in which case maybe you'll come to a future one. Um, but the uh, idea here is these are both tags that are serving as recipes, as project templates. If we go into the tag definition, in this case, because I have it saved as a reference, I'll just click on this little uh, hashtag here. And you can see I have it set up so that it's going to have its normal task space. I have a due date. I have a project status, which actually for weekend upgrade is not going to be an idea. It's going to be straight into planning. So I'll set that right now. I set these up over the weekend. Um, my review cycle as needed. So I'll review it as, as I'm prompted to review it. Um, I have my project resources, which is bringing in resources the same way that the tasks are brought in using that grandparent definition. And then I have down here my template tasks, and these arrive each time I need to set up a new weekend upgrade. So I will let me set that up for you right now. All four of the, all five of these, and all of the hidden ones up here arrive because it, this extends project. The two down here arrive because they're attached to the weekend upgrade. So I have my topic, which I will add when I, you know, am creating it or at some point in the process. And then I have the template tasks. So let me create an instance of weekend upgrade. Let's imagine, I, I don't recall, uh, let's go out to like the weekend upgrade 24. So we're not conflicting with anything I created. And I tag that as a weekend upgrade. It will automatically have all of the information uh, that you saw in that setting. When I click template tasks, I can highlight them or I can do it one by one, whatever, set them as to do. They'll all automatically be set to being tasks that are related to weekend upgrade 24. And when I'm doing weekend upgrade, 
I actually schedule these tasks. So these will all be set as scheduled, command or control K, horizon, scheduled, and then I'll set them on specific days here. So I'll set, set the topic for, you know, whatever date I need to do it. I do it for the Wednesday after I set this, and then I'll set the, you know, review, make sure it's being fully outlined, make sure it's drafted, polish and send it. Those are the four tasks that keep me going. Now I will add tasks as I go. Um, and as I have get into the rhythm of the writing that will actually be make a first pass at such and such, make the next pass at, get this into, um, you know, Obsidian where I do my, where I do my actual drafting. I'm actually using Lex now for that drafting, but whatever that next task would be, I do that rhythm um, uh, prompted by making sure that I'm fully outlined, making sure that I'm drafted, but it doesn't lock me into, oh, I have to have done that drafting on Friday. No, this is just waypoints to make sure that I've done them. And those tasks live here um, and they're scheduled. And so they'll arrive on a certain day as I need them. Same concept here with the AP productivity cohort. I'm going to delete all that because I don't actually need all of those. The other advantage, by the way, of keeping the tasks at where they're defined as to do's in the, uh, template tasks rather than like moving them to a today is that if you need to delete the whole project, it will also delete <laughs> the original tasks of things um, that that are there rather than leaving them sort of loosely hanging out on a today page. If you add a task to uh, a query, it creates that task on your today page and creates a search to it in the uh, in the other. This way, if I save that within the project as well, if the original definitions are within the project, that means that when I delete the project, they all go away as well. Um, which, I mean, I may not need to delete a project. I don't normally do that, but it is worth noting. My AP productivity cohort is an entire layout of what I need to do um, from the beginning to the end to make sure I have a, a cohort. It goes from things that I need to do pre-launch to things that are actually related to launch um, to things that are actually um, after launch. And by doing all of those things in here, uh, when I create an instance, and I'll actually just walk you to where I created the instance rather than running it. I created an instance yesterday um, or day before, I guess, Saturday. Um, sorry, I hit the wrong button there. Where, um, did I type it out? Yeah, I typed it out. Um, so there, I have cohort seven all set up here. Uh, the original tasks are still living in the template tasks. They're all fully to-dos now. Um, and they will show up up here and anything I add to that mix to cohort seven, which is incidentally will show up as one of my lists in my tasks because AP productivity cohort is, is an extending project and project is extending bin and my list field looks for instances of bin. <laughs> so they all still go back in the tree structure back to bin, um, which allows me then to be able to, uh, to create this as a list. And if I were to create a new task, just say down here somewhere, a uh, new task for cohort seven as a to-do. Well, it's already selected as that because I, have, I created it underneath it uh, and it has that automatic assignment. But even if I didn't, it's, it's included as one of the lists here and I can look it up. It's one of the things that's, oh, it undid it because I had it already set, but it can be added then um, uh, into that list because of the way I have that, that set up. Now, I will encourage you, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, come off this screen here and go back to just being me and we'll stop the share. What I just showed you um, is only complicated because there's two other videos worth of underpinning that made this possible. Now it's also a little, I shouldn't say only complicated. It's also slightly complicated because I move a little quick here because I'm, I'm walking you through a few different things. As I say, the Tana for Tasks course walks through it more slowly uh, so that you can have a, a clear understanding of how that is built. But the key points uh, to take away from, from this, and then I'll take any questions you have, and I can go a little past noon my time, uh, here um, uh, today because I don't have to be immediately run out, but if you, so I can take any questions you have. But the key points are here that Tana allows you to build these dashboards, uh, and the dashboards are very, um, very flexible in terms of what you can review um, if you have the tab set up. And one of the key points of AP Productivity is that when you have something that recurs, being able to capture that recurrence 
uh, and make use of that in the future is really powerful. Tana makes that simple. The super tags make that really, really easy to do. If I have a kind of project that's going to occur on a frequent basis, capturing that in its own tag uh, that you can then set all the preset parameters in. And then when you launch the project, just launch that tag. And now you have a project, it's all set up, it's all ready to roll. That's really, really powerful. So those are the ideas. Questions, things you'd like to see me uh, explore further in, in, you know, within reason, noting that we don't have hours upon hours to do it right now. Hey, RJ, I think that one of the uh, weaknesses potentially of this approach, and it's one that I haven't fixed yet either, is that the tasks that are in the recurring project are simple one-liners. In other words, there's no structure to those tasks. You can't assign them to different people or refer them to instructions or have any of the other characteristics of the task remembered so that they are automatically uh, implemented. I understand what you're saying. It took me a second to realize. Actually, you could do that. Uh, because fields can be set up independent of having a to-do tag on them, you could set up the fields in advance. So if let's, let's say, for example, let me uh, share my demo graph back over here. I realize I'm not sharing a screen at all at the moment. I'll, I'll get that done here momentarily. Um, that's actually such a really good point. It's worth exploring here in the moment. So if I were to say, um, let's set up a, a, a new uh, recipe here. Let's go to the day page to do that. Sorry, it's a little awkward to find the day page in a graph that isn't your primary graph because you can't just click today. It'll keep going back to my primary graph um, if I do that. So I have to have to get at it in a different way. Actually, we don't even need to to uh, um, set up a separate thing. Let's just do it here from our sample project, and I will um, undo having these set up as to dos first, uh, which will, as you note pull them out of the tasks uh, view query up top. But say when I created the sample project, actually I didn't need to do it like that. That was, that was unnecessary. I need to do it in the configuration. When I set this project, if I had a, I could go underneath this and I could say, put a field assignee, for instance, uh, and set that field as a, um, hang on, it's gone down here. It's, it's awkward here because of my screen size. Let me up it slightly. And now I'll have a little more uh, room to work with here. If I were then to, uh, you know, go into that assignee field and say, oh, this needs to be an instance of person, for instance, let's set that up. And now we'll go back to it being uh, the, our sample project. I could set that person up. We know we have Joe Smith in here. And I could have an assignee ready for that to do so that when I launch a new, uh, an, a new instance here of sample project, this is a second instance of sample project. That information will come along um, here in our template tasks as a field. And when I assign that as a to-do, oh, sorry, that's that little buggy thing where I have to do one at a time, and, or at least one of them at a time, and then I can grab the other two here. I'm not sure what that is. When I assign it as a to-do, that field information conveys. So I still have the assignee gathered. Now, of course, that, that's not a, a field that I have currently associated with to-do, but you could. <laughs> that could be just one of your to-do fields. Um, and you wouldn't have to define it as a to-do to be able to, to attach the assignee as a field to that sample or to that um, proto to-do, if you will, the, what you have listed there in that template task. Does that solve what you're talking about? Yeah, I think that's really good. By the way, the, the one thing that uh, you're calling a bug I, I think I've read on Slack why that's a, okay. uh, an issue. And that is they don't update uh, queries or lists in the background because of performance issues. So you have to actually open it once in order for the query to be updated. Got it. Got it. Got it. That wasn't what I was meaning with this latest bug, but I, I know what you're talking about there. So in order to open and close the one where I made the to do and it didn't show up immediately, have to right. open and close it once in order for the update. Yeah, cool. That's good to know. But yeah, you, and this is actually that's a great question, Brian, because it ties into something that's really powerful about Tana. We don't talk about a ton because we get talking about our super tags, which is understandable because they're so cool. But you can attach a field to anything. 
um, a field doesn't have to have a certain association with a super tag. So I can have a I can have a field in to do, for instance, um, that 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 allows me to assign someone to the task. I don't have an assignee in my personal to dos because it's going to be me. Um, there's anybody else to assign it to. Um, but the uh, uh, doesn't seem like pointless to bother with that. But if you did, you could still in the sample like we have here in the template test without ever having defined a to do you could create that assignee field, attach that assignee field, and put the appropriate person in it. And then that information would convey when you turn it into a to-do. Other discussion points, questions? What do you think, Tracy? Have Is your mind uh, blown again? Oh, yeah. Um, you, you may know, I don't know if the rest of you know, I'm really having some trouble with my eyesight. Um, this eye has deteriorated a lot in the past six to eight weeks, and I'm going to get it taken care of soon. So um, it's, it's hard for me to actually see what you're doing on the screen, which is fine because everybody else, you know, needs to see the full thing. Um, but watching you do this and hearing your explanation gives me a sense then of how I can install these one at a time after I have a right eye that has 2020 vision again. I love that. And, yeah. and that is the goal of Tana for Tasks, not to restore your vision, but you have, you're on that. Uh, but Tana for Tasks, the goal being to... Uh, uh, you know, do it in a broken down way so you can install the things one thing at a time rather than RJ talking just incessantly for an hour um, and, and hoping that it all lands somewhere. But that I'm is, still yeah. totally pissed off at, at my inability to put a day, the day of the week on the side so that I can move stuff over. It. Oh, it's driving me nuts. So here, let me actually show you um, we might be able to 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 do that here because I know what you're talking about. Effectively, you know, you want to be able to open a sidebar, um, like 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 you have mm -hmm. in Rome, and or open yep. your an agenda or whatever in the sidebar. Yep. So there isn't a sidebar, but you do have some control over that. And you notice me manipulating back and forth between uh, sizes. Let me go down a little smaller, so you won't be able to see necessarily anybody. I've, I mean, you can maybe, but it's I've made the screen a lot smaller here just for the demonstration yeah. purposes. Yeah, that's fine. If I were to click on agenda, uh, if I were to shift control uh, on, uh, excuse me, control click uh, on, on agenda uh, or command click, I believe, on the Mac, uh, it will open it in a separate pane over here. What makes it tricky is if your screen size is a certain way or you have a couple others open, it can be awkward to figure out where or how they're going to go. But you do have some control, and it isn't. And and I think there is a saved. I'm gonna. I'm talking now a little bit beyond my knowledge because I haven't messed with it much. But the saved layouts will actually let you have some control over what you know what can be saved um, in terms of the 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 layout of the panes on your screen. Um, that's I know not very helpful to say. It's some control over, and I'm not being specific. Yeah. But you can drag the agenda. It'll give you a little bit of line up to the top here, and now it's above. The today and if i grab this top and drag it again i can drag it over to the side it's it's kind of persnickety because it's close you have to get to where you can see that line and now it'll be over on the side uh and now it's i don't know if that's exactly what you're looking for as far as that goes yeah but but that's they do have some control over the layout of the panes and actually if i were to open a third like if i were to open control click dash review dashboard it'll initially open it in line here sure um, but I could take it and drag it atop. A That's a very, very precise way of saying it. Drag it atop the agenda. And now I actually have the layout of the, the, the original one is over here on the left, and the other two are stacked on the right. So it's it, okay. there is some control over the pain. It just it, there is some a pain point, if you will, in terms of the control over the pains um, and how you would lay them out. Can you show me one more time how you got the agenda from here to here and I'll hang up and listen. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So all I did with agenda and now, mind you, this would be a daily thing. I mean, obviously, it's you obviously it, an agenda is going to be different on every day. It's going to be a different yeah. node every day, yeah. but I can just control click. I'm holding control. Mm -hmm. And if I'm on Mac, I can use command uh, mm -hmm. click that and it'll open it in a new pane. And when it opens, oh. it in a new pane, yes. OK. That lets you have right. it on the side and it will let you, you have it you. it'll create a new one and depending on your screen size it may choose a different location to be it but you can generally speaking um manipulate those okay thank you yep thank absolutely. you guys for your patience no oh, Jen. yes carol is there any way to stop them all scrolling at the same time when, when you've got two pages? not that i found yet um the, the, the way i do it is by closing up as many things on the ones <laughs> So I can keep level with what I'm doing. No, no, I, I'm not. I'm sure that's on the the their roadmap because it isn't much use to have panes that move in in sync with one another all the time. <laughs> but yes, I I am. I, I don't know of a way to do that at, at this point, and I'm aware of it because I frequently work from one pass of something to the next pass of it from pain to pain. And it is as we as the joke I made a moment ago, a pain point um, with with the scrolling. So. The other pain point that I have with those is I get a pane set up on the right hand that I like, and I want to navigate somewhere else on the left. But when I do that, then it just wipes out both panes and starts from the beginning. So I, I don't like that. Um, I but agree. Otherwise, yeah. You can use back within the within yep. Tana to restore the previous setup you had. And then if you find whatever you was you wanted to navigate to, inside the original pane you can you can avoid that but yes that is a, a little bit of a a thing that uh, is is tricky to understand without messing with it a few times other questions or discussion points no i mean so i mentioned in the circle that i have been using tana paste for my recurring projects yes, thank you and it went kind of wonky today. Um, I'm not sure if there was an update that caused some problems. And so I, I was having some fields being pre-populated, but seems to now be creating new fields versus populating the existing fields. Um, but it wasn't doing that over the weekend, so I'm not sure what happened. Um, do you want me to do a quick demo of that? That's up to you. If you'd like to do it now, or if you'd rather do it on an office hours, I, it's just, you can welcome to do it now. I just I didn't know if it, we, you weren't sure what it was gonna, how it was gonna behave. It's up to you. Um, I'll, I'll just walk you through quickly. Sure, what, great. Um, Fire away. And then maybe I'll actually have a working demo at some point. <laughs> um, I'm going to share my whole screen just because I have a couple different apps going on here. And so Tana Paste is basically just a textual format that you can paste into Tana, copy and paste into Tana that creates different nodes. Um, so I know that's really small. Um, but basically what this syntax does is just tell a whole bunch of different nodes, different fields within there. Um, and when I go over into Tana itself, um, I've this is all in an application called Alfred, which is my application launcher. Um, I could have this as just a text file and manually copy and paste this. That would work just the same. But what I have it set up is uh, an application launcher, which allows me to search for different snippets, kind of like that command K in Tana, so I can actually see a list of things. Um, and select it, and it, all it's doing in the background is just pasting that text right in here. So what just happened would be the same as if I manually copy and pasted this in. Um, and then it creates a, a project for me uh, right here with let me close those all up with tasks down below. And obviously, um, for the normal tasks that we create that belong to a project, you're not creating them inside the project itself, like we have talked about before. Um, but it allows me to pre-populate different fields. Uh, once again, I had this bin field here. That bin field should be up here. But like you said, like I said, over the, the weekend, um, it started creating a new field versus using the existing uh, bin field. Um, so I'm not sure what's up with that. And the only other thing that I noticed is these to do's I, I have in to do my no, not to do. Oh, yep, bin. Um, I have that auto initialized to ancestor with the tag selected. It doesn't work with Tana paste. Um, so all of these here, I would have to manually set the bin to be, say in this case, regional moot. Um, because of those two things, I, I'm actually think I might switch back and use what you just demoed, RJ. Um, I, it is different than the initial 
takeaway that I um, had from the AP productivity lectures, um, but how you demonstrated having that field with the tasks being part of that as a template, that looks pretty streamlined. And so I think I might jump over to there unless I can figure this stuff out. The only thing I don't like about your setup is it just kind of adds a whole bunch of super tags to my list and I'd have a different super tag for each template. But I mean, technically, hey, when I'm planning a regional moot, um, let's say, so kale moot that that is a in this case regional moot and so it would make sense in the super tag uh syntax uh in tana to have its own um super tag but hey who knows it's still a little bother but i guess they have said that there is going to be stuff with like recurring tasks coming and so you know who knows by the end of the year this might be a moot issue <laughs> I, I like that a lot of uses of the word moot that going on there uh that's good so, so can, can I uh, put in sure. for just a second? <clears throat> I'm, I'm doing something similar to what RJ is, except that I'm keeping the task that I'm going to reuse outside of the project as a separate list. And the reason I'm doing that is that for a single super tag, like let's say business trip, I could have a list of tasks that apply to a trip to Chicago and a separate list of tasks that apply to say a trip to New York. And what that does is it allows me to use one super tag with three or four or five or 25 different variations of tasks that, uh, so for example, Carol, when Carol goes out birding, she might have a different set of, you know, a basic birding super task, but seven or eight different sets of tasks depending upon which location she's going to. Anyway, I think that, that the idea that a super tag could be reused with different task lists is uh, an extra means of flexibility. I agree with that. And I would say, it, it, Kelly, do you want me to do you mind if I re-show my screen or did you want to demo something specific? No, here? go ahead. I was just um, basing on what Brian said. I tried changing uh, the time of paste to just be the tasks, but even then it does not um, pre-populate that bin field. Gotcha. Uh, so that's kind of a failure there as well. But yes, let me stop sharing the screen and it's all yours. So what I would say, Brian, is I actually don't think that that needs to be separate. I think that can exist in what I'm describing here. Um, I'll share it here and, and, and resize it slightly since I sized it down. Uh, I'm getting into the good habit of remembering to size these screens up um, as I do it. If I were to create, um, uh, let's go into the, the sample project tag here. I could create here, um, we'll just say that we'll use your example, Chicago trip and slide them underneath here and then create a uh, New York trip. I'll try to spell it right. Uh, task, 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 uh, and then have you know whatever else I want. And then when I cre create the new instance of the project, notice I did that within the in the configuration. Everybody's watching here. If anybody's still watching an hour and fifteen minutes in, um, if I create a second a, a third instance, this is a third instance. You have a sample project. What's that? You have us riveted. Exactly. Well, good, good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, when I go to my template tasks this time, I can just define the tasks as tasks that I want to use. So I can say, okay, Chicago trip, we're going to use the, this is a Chicago trip. So we'll tag these as to do. And once again, I still don't think that's, I still don't completely understand why that does that. Um, I have to define one. Okay. Well, whatever. Once I've defined the one, it seems to let me grab the others regardless. And then maybe that does have something to do with being in the, in the field. I don't know. Now I've defined those three tasks. They're going to show up here in this. And the other tasks are just they're, they're, they never get become live. And because I have the template tasks hidden, uh, once I reopen this the next time, I never have to worry about seeing that again. They're living there um, if I'd ever need access to the originals. But I, I mean, I don't need access to the originals uh, because I can grab them from there. Mm -hmm. So effectively, I could I could contain more than one task mm -hmm. ver variation of the task list inside that template tasks field without it being a hassle. Uh -huh. You're just about convincing me, RJ. 
<laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. There's, I tell you what, over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of Brian convincing RJ. Um, so I love it. I love it whenever there's an RJ convincing Brian. Um, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. I, I'm not just about isn't all the way there yet. We'll, we'll, I'm not going <laughs> to. Uh, but yeah, I think that it, having it there means that I don't have to go look for it somewhere else. Because if I have to go look for it somewhere else, I'll need to have a link to that other place. Not that that's a huge deal. Or you have to have something what Kelly has set up there, whether you're, and that probably, Brian, you have this set up too, only with drafts or uh, something with Keyboard Maestro that is bringing it in uh, to Tana as you do that. Regardless, I think building it there seems to be pretty functional. Um, and it's worked. I mean, I haven't had separate task list yet that I've used live, but I don't uh, running it there the way I just did seem to work fine. So I think that would work OK without it being an issue, an issue. Yeah, and I think if it, you know, from a practical standpoint, if you're building that, what you'd want to do is to build one and then copy, say, 20 of them down and change two. Right. Yes. Other other uh, questions, other considerations here? I will need to go here shortly. So, um, Just one yeah, small so. question that doesn't really have to do with the main topic here, but in your project structure, in the sample project structure that you had there, I noticed that you had tasks set up as a field with a search um, parameter being the content of that field, but project history was just a search node on itself. Is, is any reason? Yeah, because I haven't done that yet in project history. Okay. Um, I, it, you're seeing RJ in the middle, not only in the middle of his iteration, but in the middle of the iteration of his demograph, <laughs> which is which is another whole layer of RJ iteration. Um, so yeah, don't take don't put too much stock in the way I had project history there set up. The reason I I didn't originally I originally had tasks outside the field too, but I've become convinced that if you really want to have good access to everything in Tana, you want it living in a field. Now that doesn't mean that you know that's for stuff that's that's structured. Obviously, things that are unstructured don't need to live in fields. But in this case. It does need to be a structured component, so I indeed would put that in a field and have done so in my main, in my main definition of project in my actual graph. Yeah, in mine, I have tasks as a separate search node. I saw yours, and I'm like, oh, duh, that makes so much sense. <laughs> good, good. Other questions? This morning, I ended up putting a whole hub with the um, tabs across the top inside another hub which works really well but it's a bit meta <laughs> <laughs> that's what when it's all nodes you can put everything inside of everything upside of that thing and over this thing and yeah no i know well it's what's funny is that conceptually there are times that you just absolutely need to do that and it's really hard to do it any other way but it can be really difficult to wrap your mind around i i have the same thing i'm like uh how many levels deep am i uh yeah it, it can be quite disorienting um, it's, it's, it's an interesting challenge for someone like me who wants to be as clear as possible in my definition, definitions and descriptions. That's the, the, so much is possible, uh, that it's, it's sometimes hard to be that way. So I, I, it's nice having this iteration by the by, I appreciate you all in these live sessions. I, I, hope, I, I know I'm bringing value to, it. I'm not apologizing or anything, but it is nice to have this iteration to process, uh, how I'm going to articulate something before I like break it down into little chunks. It just makes it a lot easier to have it, have said it <laughs> aloud once uh, and made sure that it ran in an actual demo and made some sense. So I have cool. got a, a question, sure. uh, it's sort of more of an issue and it might be better for office hours rather than for here. Um, I, I don't keep, know. So I keep doubling up. Um, it's to do with my bird watching again. Yeah. I've got nature reserve as a super tag or mm -hmm. reserve as a super tag but when i add one i first of all i get one with the super tag after it and then i'm getting a, a second issue second instance of it without the super tag after it so i'm get i'm doubling up and if i accidentally add a bird to the wrong one it doesn't show up in the right one and right. it's confusing the heck out of me <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it sounds like, and I mean, I'd have to see it, and maybe maybe office hours is probably the more logical place to share it. But uh, my my guess is that you just have a node somewhere that's named that also, um, and so you just have a duplicate that you probably need to dispose of after having made sure that anything you have attached to that node is is 
you know, reattached correctly to the to the right node. I certainly did that a lot early on. Not saying I don't still do it. Uh, I still have a couple of remnants of things that are duplicates that are annoying, and I still haven't fixed them just because I don't use them enough to worry too much about it. But and, and I've been doing a few other things too. But the uh, it's uh, I, I I had that issue where I have multiple instances of something. One I just fixed this morning actually. I, I know I mentioned my business networking chapter, my BNI meetings that I run. Um, whenever one of the other members of the chapter has a referral request, we have we go through the meeting and everybody gives their little presentation and 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 I note the referral requests. Um, I I I tag uh, I have a field for the BNI member, um, which is a BNI member is a tag that extends person that has some additional information about them, uh, and and then I have a field for the date, uh, and then I have a field that. Uh, is where I can write the request. And so I can track those over time by person, by date, by whatever. But on the top level, I was I had a I have a BNI referral request tag that that all of that lives under. And at the top level, I was just using their name to display uh, as the top thing. The problem is then when I go search for their name, I'm seeing both their person tag, there be, and, and also the tag, the several different times they've had referral requests over time. And I'm like, ah, I should go into the BNI referral request configuration and change that automatic name so that it's more information than just their name. And that so I now have it saying like the name of the person uh, referral request on the date, which I populate from that from that automatic naming field. Uh, and then that way now I don't have any extra nodes that are automatically named and because they're automatically named just from one other source i have then what appear to be duplicates that I have to see which has the right tag on it in order to choose it so that was just an example of my own design creating <laughs> not exactly they're not actual duplicates but the the appearance of duplicates um as i was searching and and i kind of then worked around that to to flesh out the information on that on the name of the node so that it isn't it isn't disorienting anymore. I think my my problem is I've got a, f um, a field with fixed options, which is reserve, mm -hmm. na nature reserve. And that's got all the different ones that I can pick from. But the one I pick from there is the wrong one. It's only showing one. But when gotcha. I pick it, it's, it's putting the wrong one in and I can't work out how to get the right one in. Are you, you say you're using fixed options. Are you using fixed yeah. options or are you using instances of reserve? Uh, I'm using fixed options, I believe. Because I think that you might be able to solve that by using instances of reserve, if that's the case. You may have a node in there that is not the actual reserve node, and that's what's causing that rather than, and if you don't, then you can change it. You don't, and the nice part is these things, even ton is so good at keeping track of stuff, even when you make changes. I flipped the the things that I use for the source of my list a couple, three times. It didn't mess anything up in terms of the information that was stored, which is sort of shocking in a way, but awesome. Um, but if you change that that list field, whatever your, whatever the field is that you're using to choose the reserves, if you change that to instances of reserve, then you'll only be seeing instances of the reserve. I maybe and maybe you already have that. Maybe there's some other little weirdness going on in the background um, that has caused that to be a duplicate. But it, I wonder if it might be that your fixed option is not the actual one that's assigning it over to the correct uh, node that is tag reserve. If I took it out of the list and then added it while adding a new one. You could, <laughs> you could no, no no i understand you could do that but i think if you just change it to show it to me in office hours because i want to okay. see it but i think it's i think it's something that we can fix fairly easily in office hours okay. so, yeah i say that hopefully we can now <laughs> others all right i'm gonna call it good then thank you all this has been productive and you can watch it again. You can also wait for a ton of for tasks to simplify it a bit further, not necessarily simplify further, but uh, to uh, uh, to break it down into smaller chunks. <laughs> It'll be the same content, just sim uh, more simply displayed. Uh, excellent. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye.